Looking to learn how to make and weather a building for your diorama or model train layout? Then this is the place for you. Hello, this is Anthony bringing you the fifth installment of my N-Scale Diorama How-To Series. This series will take you through all the steps necessary to create a realistic scene for your standalone diorama or as part of a model train layout. So please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future installments. This is how it looks finished and temporarily placed in the scene with a few trees and some ground cover. For this build, I'm starting with a kit from JL Innovation Design. Using the kit was convenient as it came with windows and doors, but it would have been almost just as easy to scratch build after purchasing some scale lumber and windows and doors. The weathered, peeling paint look I am going for requires an initial coat of paint to look like primer, so I mixed up some black and white acrylic paint that I bought from Walmart. You will notice the wood warped after applying the paint, so I wet the other side with water and used metal blocks to press it into shape while drying. I should have sealed the pieces first. Next comes a liberal dose of hairspray. Because hairspray is water soluble and prevents the top coat of paint from adhering to the first coat, it works great to model peeling paint. After letting a liberal coat of off-white paint dry, it was time to try my hand at peeling back the top coat and exposing the primer gray. I've seen a few videos demonstrating this, so first I tried to use a technique of scratching off the top layer using a wire brush. I augmented this by taking a pair of tweezers and further scratching the paint. In the end, I wasn't too happy with the way this turned out. Both the paint and the hairspray are water soluble. So after switching to using a wet Q-tip and by rubbing the top coat and using the paper stem, I was able to get the look I wanted. It is really a simple trial and error process, taking your time and rubbing off a little at a time until you get the look you want. I've also seen other modelers using a very stiff brush to get similar results. I then turn to painting the windows and door frames a contrast in color. The initial coat of acrylic paint didn't cover very well, and even the second coat was a bit spotty. At first I found this disappointing, but then I realized it gave me the aged and weathered look without really trying. If I didn't want that look, it probably would have taken a third coat to get that nice, clean, fresh paint look. After letting the parts dry, I use an X-Acto knife to cut them out of the sprues. After this experience, I think I'm going to add a sprue cutter to my tool wish list. It turns out the plastic doors don't fit very well inside the provided door frames. I messed around with this quite a lot, even referring to the instructions, trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. In the end, I just had to deal with the fact that they just weren't going to fit properly. In addition to the doors, I found the windows to be a bit of a challenge. Maybe it's just me, or the fact that I was trying this for the very first time, but it all seemed very fiddly. In the end, I discovered that if I lay the pieces out and then press the wall sides down on top of the parts, I can get them to fit and stay in the openings long enough for the glue to dry. I used Loctite super glue, which I found worked quite well, although it was pretty unforgiving if you don't get the pieces lined up very fast. To ensure good hold, I added more glue on the inside walls as well. To assemble the four walls, I attached strip wood to the wall corners as bracing and to create more surface for the glue to attach. This was one of those projects where the fast drying glue caused a few problems. I'm not showing it here, but I had to chisel off my work a couple times 
because the strips weren't right up against the edge of the wall. After that, it was a simple process of gluing the four walls together. In addition to the glue I placed on the braces, I also added drops of glue in the corners where the two walls meet at the ends of each brace. You may have noticed that the back wall had two pieces of scrap wood glued to it. I did this as a quick and easy way to remedy the warping in the wall that I couldn't seem to fix by re-wetting the wood and weighing it down with the metal blocks. After affixing the shed to the main building, it was time to scratch build the roof out of some balsa wood. I started out by making a template using some midnex card stock that I had available. I could have measured it with a ruler, but it was easier to just put the card stock directly on the roof and mark it out with a pen before cutting it out with a pair of scissors. After transferring the dimensions to the wood, I used a micro mark jig to make my straight cuts with an X-Acto knife. I made sure to not press too hard and just take multiple passes over the wood to ensure a cleaned cut. I also painted the edge of the wood pieces with the trim color because I knew they would be exposed even after I put the roof paper on. For the roof, I'm using a technique I just recently learned by watching a video that Jason Jensen of Jason Jensen Trains shared on his YouTube channel about a week or two ago. If you haven't seen his channel, I highly recommend it. It is pretty basic and starts out by taking a sheet of black construction paper and spraying it first with gray spray paint and then with black. You don't have to be too careful with this because you actually want it to be unevenly applied. You then cut the paper into strips that are roughly the width of a roll of tar paper. I just eyeballed it for end scale. I then took each strip and selectively rubbed very fine sandpaper over it to remove various layers of paint and to create wear and tear marks in the paper. I also used my X-Acto blade to rough up the paper, mostly along the edge, to replicate years of harsh weather and people climbing or leaning a ladder against the roof. Strips like this, the ones that are more weathered and worn, are used as the first row of paper along the edge of the roof. I then worked the strips up to the peak of the roof, one at a time. I initially thought I would spread the glue over the entire roof, but then realized it was drying out before I was able to get all the strips laid. So I ended up just adding glue to each strip as I went along. This was a somewhat tedious process, but in the end, it was well worth the time. I didn't pay too much attention to how I laid the strips along the edge because I was able to just trim the edges once all the strips were glued down. Once the two halves of the roof were ready to be attached to the structure, I first dry fit them to see if I had to do any modifications. It turns out that if I sanded the edges at an angle, I could get them to fit together tight enough so I wouldn't have to add a roof ridge. After that it was down to attaching them with glue one at a time and finishing the small flat roof for the attached shed. I really like the effect of the two techniques I have used so far, peeling paint and weather tar paper for the roof, but I think what really sets it apart is using artist pastels to add dirt and grime. I found that using a brush with short, stiff bristles made it easier to apply the pastels. I started from the bottom with a heavier application because I figured that's where the building would be the dirtiest, with dirt splashing up from the ground during rainstorms. I also added some random streaks on the walls 
and did the same thing on the roof to replicate stains from nails and fallen leaves over the years. I alternated between two different colors, raw umber and burnt sienna, until I got the look I wanted. It is best to start with a light application and add extra layers to build up the colors as desired. Well, I'm very happy with the way this turned out, and I hope you've enjoyed following me on this part of the N-Scale Model Train Diorama project. If you have not already done so, and you would like to see more, I encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. Thank you for watching. Please leave comments and suggestions on how I might improve future videos. Thank you.